Welcome back. What we're going to do is continue working with the same scene here. Uh, in this video, I'm going to focus on a couple of things. I'm going to focus on making the actual particles behave and act the way that I want them to so I can get the effect that I want. And the uh, other main thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to apply the polygonizer mesh to my particles to get them actually looking like paste. So this is what I have. If I hit play, basically got two of paste moves and we've got these particles just kind of landing on the table. Okay, so right now I have the uh, paste material applied to my particles here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly, before I get into, you know, modifying the paste material or, or anything like that, I'm going to go ahead and just apply a mesh to this. Okay, so with the point cloud selected, what I'm going to do is go to the create menu over here and create a surface from point cloud. I'm going to get my mesh. Let's zoom in here a little bit. So there's my mesh of the particles landing there on the table. If I hit play and continue to play this, looks uh, kind of like what you would expect, some paste sort of material or whatnot. Um, there is a little bit of a problem here. It's actually kind of a big deal. If you notice carefully, it might be hard to see in the video, but if you're following along exactly uh, with the same project I'm doing, you may notice a little bit of a problem. When this paste lands on the table, it's jittering around. So the mesh, you can actually see the mesh down here is actually jittering for a pretty long time um, after those particles, you know, are emitted, fly out of the tube of paste, and land on the table. Those particles kind of jitter around a little bit. So to make it easier to see, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mute the uh, the mesh so it doesn't calculate. So we just see the particles. So you can see, watch this area right here as the particles land for several seconds. The particles kind of jiggle around and move around a little bit, kind of like what you would expect from a very elastic material. And that's precisely why that's happening. It's because of the elasticity in the material. The standard material paste or the paste material does that on purpose. That's just the way it behaves. If we open up the paste material PPG, we can adjust some of the settings. So right now we've got elasticity settings and plastic settings as well as pressure settings, which are settings usually associated with liquids and fluids. Okay, so let me do this. Let me go to the multi-physics node over here. We're using quite a bit uh, of these parameters. And what you always want to make sure, this is very easy to overlook. It happens to me all the time, where uh, you need to make sure that whatever parameters you're using in the Lagoa material, just double check and make sure that you have those parameters checked on in the multi-physics node uh, because if you're going to be using for example elasticity settings you have to make sure that you have uh, elastics turned on here in the multi-physics node so just a quick check here and make sure that everything that I need is turned on which it is so back to the problem the problem is that these particles are kind of jiggling around a little bit and for some projects that may be a good thing for right now, that's not what I want because what I want is for this to simulate sort of like a, a really kind of tough paste that lands on the table and doesn't jiggle around uh, because it's not a fluid, okay? So it shouldn't have that fluid-like property. It shouldn't be jiggling around. So to fix that, what we can do is we can uh, start to lower the or change the elasticity settings. So right now, this is very elastic. So, for example, I could drop down to elasticity, go back to the first frame, play this again see how it behaves. If the problem's fixed, then good. I can move on to the next part of my project. If it's not fixed, then I'm going to have a problem. So as I drop these down, they still kind of jiggle around a little bit. Not as much as before, but they still jiggle a bit, and I don't want any jiggling. So um, let me go to the damping parameters. The damping parameters is very good for uh, stopping you know, elastic type objects from uh, moving around all over the place. So let me increase the damping to one. Play it again particles fall, they still jiggle a bit, they're dampened a little bit, but they're still moving around, so it's still too fluid-like, okay, uh, and I don't want that. Right, so I could sit here and I could play with these parameters until I get something that I'm happy with. However, I'm not really going to waste time, instead I'm going to find a quicker solution, okay, now this, what I'm about to do right now may go against your initial instincts. But this is just the way that CGI works in general, not just Lagoa, but anything 3D across any 3D animation package, whether it's SoftImage, Maya, Max, Cinema 4D, what have you. Okay? Sometimes you just got to think outside the box and find 
a specific solution to specific problems. So if uh, a so-called out-of-the-box solution is not working, sometimes we need to go and get our hands dirty and modify things a bit and find creative solutions or workarounds to get things to work the way that we want them to. And we usually need to be able to do this very, very quickly because client deadlines, you know. So in this case, if I find that the uh, default paste material just isn't working for me and I just can't get it to look right, then I need to find another solution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this paste material and disconnect it from my whole system here. And I'm going to come over here to uh, my Lagoa material types. I'm going to look for another material, okay? When all else fails, you can get the main material, which is this blue one over here, and modify this material exactly how you need it. However, this is very advanced because you have so many properties that you really have to have a lot of experience to, uh, to get the right look that you want. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to take the easy route. I'm going to look at this list of materials and I'm going to think to myself, what kind of material would squirt out of this bottle, land on the table, and kind of sit still and not jiggle all over the place with elasticity or, or any of that stuff, okay? And by looking at this, there's a few that could fit the bill. And one that does is the granular material. Now, the granular material doesn't have any elastics. It doesn't jiggle around all over the place. And it simulates something more like sand or any type of granular material that just doesn't jiggle or stick to itself or do any of that kind of stuff. So I'm going to take it, I'm going to plug it over here to my phase node. And if I open up its uh, PPG, very, very simple material here. We only have inelastic settings. So no pressure to worry about, no elastics, no plastic flow, or any of that stuff to have to worry about. I'm going to go to my multi-physics node. Since I'm using only inelastics, I'm going to turn everything else off. I'm going to turn on inelastics. And now what I'll do is I'll hit play. And I get these particles that just kind of fall on the table. And you notice they don't start jiggling all over the place. They just fall. They roll just a little bit. And then they stop. And they don't keep moving all over the place, which is perfect. That's exactly what I want. So let me turn the, uh, the mesh back on. I'll hit play. The mesh falls. The particles just kind of sit still. And they're not jiggling all over the place. So this mesh, when rendered out, say in an animated sequence, it won't look like it's jiggling all over the place, which can be a huge problem and can, you know, stop you from achieving the look that you want. So the mesh right now is way too low res. We need to increase the resolution of this mesh. So I'm going to increase the detail level here a bit. The ISO level you can play with until you get something that you like. And you can increase this or decrease this as much as you want. So don't go exactly with the parameters I'm using. Go ahead and use whatever, you know, whatever looks good to you. So if I play this, that stuff kind of falls, lays flat on the table, and doesn't start jiggling all over the place, which is really good. Um, another thing I want to do is right now the particles are kind of just falling out of the tube of paste. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the, um, the actual, if I go over here to the ice tree so you can see this better, I'm going to get the MIP grid node, open that up. I'm finished with this, so I'm going to close that and let me pin this down. I want to give this some initial force. Okay, so it kind of squirts out of the bottle with some pressure or some force. If I look at the emitter and I open up the translate tool here, I'm going to go to local mode and I could see that the emitter points in the X direction right here. So for the initial force, I'm going to go in X and maybe give it like a value of 10, positive 10. So it shoots out. When I hit play, and let me do this. Let me mute the mesh make it easier to see stuff here okay good so now the particles are actually shooting out of the tube uh, in the local forward direction the local X direction which is good but the particles are still falling okay so what I want them to do is kind of come out with a little bit more pressure so what I'll do is I'll go into Y maybe like a negative 5 okay much better I, I like the way that that's behaving much better okay now I got one more problem though that I need to solve if I play this you notice that when the tube really picks up speed and starts to move quickly, we get this beading effect. And by beading effect, I mean beads like beads of water. We get these sort of droplets, okay? These droplets of the mesh, which doesn't look very good. And the faster this tube of paste moves, the more this effect is going to, uh, you know, turn up. 
and it makes the whole thing look ugly and wrong and just this would not look good if we did a, a render of an animated sequence of this it wouldn't look good at all um, what we need to do here is we need to find a way to stop that from happening now the best way to stop that from happening is to increase the amount of sampling uh, in our scene and we can use a feature in this version of Softimage Mod called subframe sampling which is a very neat feature and it fixes all these kinds of problems that you'll run into because you will run into problems like this where you have fast moving objects either colliders that are moving fast particles that are moving fast or particle emitters that are moving fast or any combination of those things and when that happens when things are moving fast the simulation can't keep up it just it can't catch certain frames so the best way to solve this problem is to use subframe sampling and that solves the problem but this video has gone long enough I'm going to end this video here and I'll see you in the next one.